In our last video, we explored the age-old debate, nature-nurture, where we learned that, one way or another, it's always your parents' fault. Sorry. In this video, we're diving into something a little more electric. We're talking topics 1.2 and 1.3, the nervous system and neural firing. If you've ever wondered how your brain tells your hand to give a high five to someone, you're in the right place. So if you're ready, grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. I want you to picture your body like a high-speed highway. But instead of cars, you've got electrical and chemical signals called action potentials racing to and from your brain, faster than a group chat on a Friday night. These signals are constantly sending, receiving, and processing information from both inside your body, like, hey, my blood sugar just dropped, maybe eat something before you faint, and from the outside world, like, what's that awful smell in the kitchen? Or why does it feel like something's crawling on my arm? This network is called your nervous system, and it's kind of a big deal. It's the reason you can walk, breathe, blink, and digest all that late night Taco Bell without thinking twice. Within the nervous system, information only travels in one direction. No, not that one direction. Sorry, Harry fans. Information either travels to the brain via sensory neurons, like when you feel a mosquito on your arm or hear your phone buzz, or smell pizza from three blocks away. Or it travels away from the brain via motor neurons, heading to the rest of your body, mainly to your muscles and glands. The nervous system is divided into different subsystems and divisions. First is a central nervous system, or CNS, made up of the brain and spinal cord. The brain's job? To interpret the message and decide. What's the next move? Should I move, speak, freeze? It's the command center making the big decisions. The spinal cord is like the brain's express highway, carrying messages back and forth between the brain and the rest of the body. Our spinal cord also plays a role in quick reflexes. You could say, thank you, evolution. Sometimes there's no way to wait for your brain to weigh in, like when you touch something hot or, in my case, stepping on my son's Lego pieces at 2 a.m. in the dark. In those moments, your body takes a shortcut called the reflex arc, a fast automatic response that skips the brain entirely. Let's say you touch a hot stove. Sensory neurons detect the pain. The message relates your spinal cord where interneurons process it. Then motor neurons send the command to move your hand fast. And all that happens in a split second, before your brain even gets fully involved. Why? Because speed equals survival. But the CNS can't do it alone. That's where the peripheral nervous system, or PNS, comes in. It carries out the brain's orders and brings in new information constantly, flipping switches to keep you moving, breathing, and reacting, all without you having to think about it. The peripheral nervous system has its own subsystems too. First up, the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is all about voluntary movements. It controls your muscles. So when you raise your hand, throw a ball, or text your best friend, I'm outside, that's your somatic system in action. Then there's the autonomic nervous system. It handles all the stuff you don't consciously control. Think involuntary. Heartbeat, breathing, digestion, all happening behind the scenes. And here's an AP Psych memory hack. Autonomic sounds like automatic, because that's exactly what it does. It keeps you alive without you needing to remember to breathe. Now, the autonomic nervous system has two branches of its own, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. They're basically opposites, like the gas and brake pedals in your body. The sympathetic nervous system gets you hyped up. It's your fight or flight response system. When your body senses danger or just extreme stress, the sympathetic nervous system flips into high gears. Heart rate, up. Breathing, faster. Pupils, dilated. Digestion, put on hold because now it's not time for snacks. Whether you're being chased by a bear or just heard we're having a pop quiz, your sympathetic nervous system is like, go, survival mode activated now. The parasympathetic nervous system calms you down. It's the post-crisis recovery crew. Heart rate decreases, breathing slows, digestion back online. Snacks are now welcome. And here's your AP Psych memory hack. Think para like a parachute. It helps you slow down and land gently. All right, so we've talked about how your nervous system is this incredible communication network, split into the central and peripheral systems. But now let's zoom in, because your nervous system isn't just made of wires and Bluetooth, it's made up of cells, and two very important types to know for the AP Psych exam. First is the neuron, the basic building blocks of the nervous system. They're the tiny electrical messengers that let you think, move, feel, and remember every embarrassing moment from the seventh grade. And get this, your brain contains around 86 billion neurons, that's billion with a B. Each one forming connections with thousands of others, making a network more complex than anything on the internet. 
Working quietly behind the scenes are the glial cells, the neuron's bodyguards. They don't send messages themselves, but they play a critical support role. They protect neurons, feed them nutrients, clean up debris, and even build the myelin sheath, a fatty layer that helps messages travel faster and more efficiently. Kind of like the fiber optic internet for your brain. All right, now that we've met the neuron, let's talk about what it actually does. Because neurons don't just sit around, they communicate. Not with words, not with emojis, and definitely not with your group chats. Neurons send messages using a mix of electrical signals and chemical messengers, a process known as neural transmission. It's kind of like one neuron yelling to another, I've got a message for you, pass it on. And this is happening constantly in your brain, your spine, your fingers, your toes. Yep, neurons are talking the whole time. Even though neural transmission might sound complex, it actually follows an orderly, well-rehearsed routine. So don't stress. Just remember the order and the rest will start to make sense. Let's break it down using something we've all used, a toilet. Because nothing says cutting edge neuroscience like bathroom plumbing. Before a neuron sends a message, it's at rest, chilling, hanging out, doing absolutely nothing. That phase is called the resting potential. It's like a toilet tank that's full of water, just sitting there ready to go, waiting for the signal to flush. A neuron is filled with and surrounded by ions, which are basically charged particles. While the neuron is at rest, the inside contains mostly potassium ions, while the outside is loaded with sodium ions. This creates a negative charge inside the neuron, which is exactly how it likes to chill when it's not busy sending messages. Here's an AP Psych memory hack. Think of pouring salt on a banana. Now you've got a salty banana. Sodium on the outside, potassium on the inside. Classic neuron recipe. But neurons don't stay at rest forever. If your body's receptors receive enough stimulation, like that moment you suddenly realize a mosquito has landed on your arm, it hits something called the threshold, the minimum amount of stimulation needed to tell a neuron, okay, it's go time. In toilet terms, it's how far you have to push the handle before the toilet actually starts to flush. Once the threshold is met, the next phase begins, depolarization. Sodium rushes in, the charge flips from negative to positive, and the action potential fires down the axon. Just like when you flush, water rushes from the tank into the bowl in one strong complete movement. The message, or water, is on the move. Now, there's no such thing as a kind of flush. It either flushes completely or not at all. Same with a neuron. If the threshold is reached, it fires all the way. If not, no firing. That's the all or nothing principle. After the toilet flushes, it can't flush again right away. It needs a moment to refill the tank. That's the refractory period when the neuron resets, recharges, and returns to resting potential. No firing can happen during this time. So yeah, your brain is kind of like a toilet, a really, really smart electrical high-speed toilet. All right, let's flush out what we just covered. Oh, sorry, that was so bad. In this video, we explored the incredible communication network that is your nervous system. The reason you can walk, blink, and survive stepping on a Lego piece at 2 a.m. Tattoo this on your psych brain. The nervous system is your body's communication highway, made up of both the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system connects the brain to the rest of the body and includes the somatic system, which is voluntary movement, and autonomic system, involuntary functions. The autonomic system has two branches of its own, the sympathetic nervous system, which kicks in during stress, fight or flight, and the parasympathetic system, which helps calm you down and recover, rest and digest. Neurons are the building blocks of the nervous system, sending messages using both electrical signals and chemical messengers. The process of neural firing includes resting potential, the threshold, active potential, the all or nothing principle, and the refractory period. Or as we explained, your brain works kind of like a really smart toilet. All right, thanks for watching AP Psych Brainiacs. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss that next video. And as always, when in doubt, Trust the data, not your gut. See you next time.